Right. So, uh, this is a very ghetto live stream. Uh, I have no clue how this is gonna work out. I made this layout in five minutes because I didn't want to use my uh, live stream review project files layout. Uh, I don't even know how many people will watch. I honestly don't care. Uh, but I felt like making a live stream today. We are live now. Welcome to the stream. Let's see who's here. Uh, hey Burger. Hey Contra. Eric. Yo, woo. Jo, hello Jo. I haven't seen you around before. Welcome to the stream. Uh, hey live Foggy. What's up, Nitrativity? And uh, hello Tushan. What's up, man? We have no chat on screen, but I am watching your chat uh, on my other screen as much as I can. So don't worry about that. All right, so here's what we got. Scoby released a new plugin. It's called iDrop. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I don't really know much uh, what it's about. So I wanted to make this like a sort of first time using it live stream F from the perspective of a person who develops for the launchpad. So uh, all you guys know, uh, because like I develop stuff like Apollo and stuff like the custom firmware and uh, I, I wanted you guys to maybe see a different perspective on iDrop. Uh, like, you guys are creators. I'm not a creator anymore. You can try it for yourselves, and you can you can see how feasible it is in real-life situations and covers. I want to showcase this from a programmer's perspective. And I'm going to try to make this as understandable for you guys as possible. The live will be two minutes? No. I think I'll take an hour. Uh... Uh, how am I? I am very good right now. I'm actually feeling really good. So, uh, I haven't even gotten the plugin yet. I just started this. So, let's go ahead and download that as well. And let's see how we can do it. It doesn't need a trial or the full version. There are two versions? I don't even know. I just got the at everyone in Kaskobi's server. And, uh, this is what I know exists. Let me flip this. This is the thing that I know exists. I don't think. I don't know how the rest works, like live trial, what? Hello? Firefox is good, shut up. Click here to download the demo. Okay, so we have a demo. Okay. Uh, hold up. Okay, PogChamp. I added an A. Yeah, I'm dumb. Alright, that doesn't exist. Okay, smart. Smart. So, wait, Foggy, there's like two versions apparently, according to you? I don't know how any of this works. At all. Can you tell me about the two versions? Like, what are the differences? Okay, what are the differences between them? And which one am I getting right now? Here's live. We're gonna load this in. One will get mod. Stop it. That needs to become a sponsor. What is a sponsor? It's paid with all features. Oh. Oh no, don't worry. We're, we're, we're using the full version. But don't worry about it. We're gonna be using the full version. Probably. Depending on uh, the way Kaskobi wrote it. Okay, you get the full version. Okay, depending on how he wrote the software, we, we might be using the full version. Let's see. Alright, this is uh, pretty bad right now, actually. This, this font is way too small. I'm assuming that he uses... Uh, is Ableton at like a zoomed size, so now it looks good for him, yeah. Uh, most people use that 100%, so this doesn't look good. Right, click here to get the full ver- oh, right, I see. So wait, what does the demo even do then? What do you even have? Oh god, why would you use it like this? Oh. Let's do 100 I got the demo. Idrop is Cascobi's new plugin, apparently. I guess if you click here, it takes you to. Oh, never. Let's see. 
Okay, we're gonna go through this later. I wanna figure it out myself. So click here to get the full version. This is where I got the trial. Come on, Gus Kobe, what is this? So wait, he's he's expecting to make money off this, so he wants to like sell this, and uh, he's never releasing it fully for free. Is that the way he wants to um, do it? Boggy, if you know about what what his like sort of let's say business plan is. Okay, so all right. Uh, I don't know if the stream layout even looks good. I think this looks fine. Very ghetto stream layout because I changed my camera setup. And, uh, the the mask I used before for the uh, uh, the other live streams don't work. This is what I used for the old live streams. And uh, while this looks okay, if you do it like this, I, I have to adjust this. I also have to this a little bit up. Yeah, then it looks nice. Thing is. Sort of. Thing is, though, um, the mask doesn't work. Because the touchpad is further away. So I'm using the simple. And my task was just. What's this? So yeah, layout looks okay. Uh, waiting for Cast to join. Okay, let me try this out. So, uh, from what I understand, okay, you apparently click. Oh, error no, no selected. So you, that's your palette. Okay, so I'm gonna, other mode. One guy could just buy the full version, spend. Yeah, that's that's one of the flaws. That's how Isotonic software actually uh, gets gets shared around. Isotonic expects you to pay for Microsoft. and uh, then they just pass it around. You know. Okay, what are we doing? Probably just my... Or eye drop is blocking. Hello, because Kobe, our plugin doesn't work. It's blocking. Is, it, is this how I'm supposed to use it? Or is it supposed to be used from a different track? If I, if I mute it, then it works. If I unmute, it doesn't work. Yeah, but... How am I gonna draw if I don't see? I, I draw here, but I don't see what I've got. If I play, it doesn't does nothing works. I am no. This is user mode. You need it for performance mode. This is user mode. User mode is channel six. All right. Okay. Select them. Click call. Okay. I see that that part lit up. I still don't get output though. I have a beta? Uh, okay, maybe later. I still don't get output. Okay, let's move it to a second track. And now I should have output. Now let's see how this works. Okay, now this seems to work okay. Except, oh, ah yeah, now it seems to work. Okay, I'll try performance mode. I wanted to use it with stock because I think that's what Cascobi's intending it. Yeah, this is performance mode. I'm gonna switch to innovations layout. Yeah, that's performance mode. Now let me let me drag it back up. Still nothing. Yeah, I'll just I'll just go back. I'll keep I'll stay in performance mode, but I'll put another thing. Still nothing. Seriously, can't believe Cascobi's trying to make money off a plugin that was obsolete before. Hello? I have a very biased opinion, but I guess I would agree with you. Yeah, be selling the full. I'm very biased as the developer of Apollo, but I, I, I mean, if you make software that's obviously good, you put a lot of time into it, I don't see why you shouldn't sell it. Like, I could have sold Apollo easily if I wanted. I think Apollo would be way easier to, to like, put actual copy protection into it. But I didn't want to do that because I want everyone to be able to use it, and I want all this kind of stuff to be free, uh, all information. That's just my philosophy, uh, like stuff that is freely accessible. Because uh, everything I used to write Apollo, everything was freely accessible. I didn't have to pay for any tutorials or have to pay an innovation for any extra features. 
everything is freely available for me, and I want to keep it freely available. Make a mini track with just eye drop, then make a second mini track for just lights, then make the eye drop mini track. Oh wait, hold. Fuck. Okay, I have that. Then make a second mini track just for lights. That's this one at the top, right? Make that the mini tracks input. So like this. That's how you're supposed to do it. Yes. And then what do I arm? I arm this one, right? Which one am I supposed to arm? You give everything away for free, good luck in making a living. Right, right now, I, I live with my parents, so I can afford that. I can afford uh, putting this out for free. Uh, but I, 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 yeah, exactly, Quantra. I don't, I don't want to make a living. Either. I drop track as in, and lights as are. So now if I edit. Hello? Oh wait. Huh? Well yeah, also the idea of just lights. You know what? I'm just gonna try to do this my way. And I'll do it like this. Just leave that there. All ins. Because this seems to work out nicely. I did that. I did that. I did eye drop. This is eye drop chart. I'll do it my way and see how it works. I I the thing you're telling me to do doesn't seem to work. So the way you're supposed to launch a login and those. I don't know that yet. Andy, let's not jump to conclusions. I don't want this backseated. I want to try it out for myself, see what it can do, and then figure out what my review is. Don't bias my review before I even start a review. Hey, Alexi. Uh, surprise live stream. I didn't really plan this. I, just... I also have nine plus pings on Discord, which I'm not going to check before I... I'll just check who they're from. Yeah, I'm not checking this. Uh, so, let's check this out. Uh, let's make a light effect. Like a generic ass one like this. So this is how, so how, from what I understand, you make your light effect like you would normally, right? And then you use eyedrop to apply so, sort of like effect to it. That seems to be what it looks like because I only have access to this feature. And for now, it seems like you can just like select. What did I do? So let's make this a bit faster. All right, let's use this. You have ten things. Fuck you, Blarg. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, Blarg. As we haven't started, I'm actually just starting right now. So, uh, now I get to like, I guess pick a color. Okay, now that part's blue. This isn't very nice though. You just have to select the meeting. It's like sort of like that. And all it does is really just change this. You could just get the number. I guess it's nice that you know what the color is though. But wait, there's something I don't like about this. Hold up. It looks odd. This word looks odd. Wait. It's good. Never mind. I'm just imagining things. No, there's. Look at this. Hang on. I found bashing cast new software? Okay. This looks so weird. Look at this. There's like a small gap here, and then there's this large gap. Can you see this? Such a difference. It's just like. I mean, it's not that big of a flaw, but it's messing with me. Oh god. I drop. <laughs> Okay, guys, stop the flame war and, and I have to time people out. I'm not gonna take any sides, but I'm gonna have to time people out. I don't wanna do that. So far, I don't know. I, I So far, I haven't seen any functionality that I uh, don't normally have in Ableton. Also, if I press space here, it doesn't play my effects, which sucks. I think with live object model, you 
probably do that. Yeah, you probably could. So the only benefit you seem to get is that you see what color it is. Alright. And then there's all these features that I don't have access to, right? Click here to get the full. This seems to still work. So... Oh, it draws above the buttons. All right. Set velocity zero to... What? Oh, while in draw mode. Is that something I need? Is that this? Okay, so one one very nice uh, benefit probably would be to have like a launchpad grid and then allow you to do a freeform selection on the grid. So like, make a rectangle like this, and then select that rectangle this here. You still have to make sense of these MIDI notes, which make no sense. This piano roll doesn't map nicely, as you can see with the colors. This piano roll does not map nicely to the launchpad at all. And you still have to kind of remember where the notes are in order to change the color. It's not really that nice. What the heck are you guys talking about? Really, I'm sorry, I, I don't have to talk. Hey, Green said. Block light effect, uh, like an alternate. Uh, sort of. If you're referring to the fact that I'm talking about the selection, yeah. Like, currently this is not nice. Because you, you still have to select at, at, with this like weird ass note pattern, and then it's not very easy to work with. Like what, what I would prefer doing instead of selecting and doing this is a technique that I've actually been using a lot. So uh, back when I was making lights, what I would do is do something like this. I would draw the part of my effect that I want in one color first. Okay, so I would draw this part first. And then I'd take this effect, set the velocity to one, and then draw the rest. And now I have uh, the, the, the one color in 127 and the other one to one. And now I can set whichever one I want to whichever color. Obviously, I picked the color, but now I'm using eyedropper. This is how I do it. And now I'll mess with figuring out that this is that part. That's what I would do it, like, if I were doing this. So there definitely needs to be an easier way to select the notes. But the, the problem with that is if you make a sort of 2D grid like the Launchpad has, uh, then you run into a problem, then you've used the two dimensions to display the buttons and you, you can't display time anymore unless you either have like a frame list. So unless you dump it down to frames, but then you can't do stuff like this anymore. And you can't do stuff like that anymore if you dump it down to frames. Or you have to use the third dimension uh, to basically like expand over time. That makes it really tricky to use UI wise 3D because the screen is a flat 2D. And it's also hard to see what you're doing. So again, this there's really no nice solution for this at all. Uh, most of the time, I'd actually not even change the colors here. What I would do is leave it to 127 and 1. And then later, because I use iris, uh, which generates gradients for me uh, in the chain, uh, what, I'd, what I'd do is I would have a velocity filter MIDI effect track. And I'd select this part and apply one iris to it. And then I'd select this part with the velocity and apply a different iris to it. That's what I would do. And I think that makes for a better workflow than this right now. Personal opinion. Have to get a nice stream, have a good... Oh, it's actually evening right now, it's uh, 11. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for sticking around, catch you later. Well, the fur version we need to pay, apparently, yeah. All right. So hang on, is that it that I can get from the demo? That's it, I guess. So he gets you to try it and then he forces you to pay for it, right? All right, now, now that I've figured out how to use this, I still don't think it's very optimal. I think the method I used to use for media lights is more optimal. I mean, it's still nice to see like that there's some kind of innovation or, okay, perhaps attempt at innovation uh, going on in, in Ableton. Uh, but so far, this doesn't seem too great to me. Okay, let's look at this from a programmer's perspective. It's time to load up Max Editor. It's time to load up Max for Live. Now, most of this will not make sense to you guys at all. Uh, but as I as I explored the, the Max code, 
I'm going to try to at least tell you guys what I'm looking at and what we're what we're doing here and what's going on. Unfreeze. Okay, this is the UI. This is this is actually the it's called the presentation, and that's basically the UI as you see it here on the device. And it's also made of max objects. So these are max objects. I place them just like I do in code. Uh, except I can I can design like how large the device is and where do I put the stuffs. Uh, and yeah. So this is basically how the, the underlying code is presented to the user. And now we get into the underlying code. We do that by clicking here. And oh boy, I don't think I'm ready for this. Actually, you probably couldn't see that because of my... Yeah, you can see. Right, this is where you design your objects. So this is how you design the UI. You can size things, place them around and change the width, etc. Let me bring this back up. Actually, I'll temporarily remove the launch pad. I don't think I'll... Yeah, uh, camera off. Camera's going off. All right, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready, but let's switch to the code. Oh, that's it. All right, this looks like just, it's just like a simple wrapper. So just the UI elements, because there's nothing really on the main screen. And then there's a sub patch, which is basically like a sub program. So yeah, you have this main max program that lies inside of this. And then when you click launch high drop and that opens up the big window, that's called a sub patcher or sub program, sort of like a child process. I guess you could relate it to that. And then that's a separate uh, max file and code of its own. So it's just a little wrapper that opens up that if we want. So it's called production panel. Link. And these are all the assets as you can see. And they're arranged nicely here. Let's open this up, and now I have access to iDrop. Now we're gonna look at what's inside of that. So I'm, I don't need this anymore, but I still have to keep it open. So I'm just gonna minimize it and hope it doesn't. Yeah, I have to keep it open. So I'll just put it on either screen, get in the way. And now we're looking at this iDrop thingy. So now you can see that he locked off the windows. I did this for Retina as well. But since this is Max for Live's editor, you can still get access to the toolbars here. If you get access to the toolbars, you can unlock it and display the code. And now, oh my god, this looks like a mess. I'm not happy about this already. Unlock. So he connected this already to these. Uh, oh god, I'm not ready for this. I haven't looked at Max code for so long. All right. Uh, this just seems to be stuff that's controlling the UI for now. This looks like a big UI object. This stuff just looks like it's going to place the thing above it. This is the zooming stuff around. So that's moving objects around because Max normally doesn't support any kind of zooming. I mean, it does have zooming. Wait, let me pin the two. I would like. Here and. Uh, so you can zoom here, but you, normally you don't get access to any kind of zoom like this in Max for Live. So if you're if you have a device, you don't get access to it. So he probably had to write like some custom routine. If we look at this JavaScript script by, made by Pedro Santos in 2017, it looks like it um, sort of have an op no outputs. Update Wraith. Yeah, it just seems to be stuff that zooms. Doesn't not really that important. Let's look inside of this UI component. That's the main UI. So this looks like it's the main UI. First of all, let's move this. Right. Actually, this is part of the UI. Should leave it. Right. So now, it's a question if we have unlocked access or not. It still depends on whether these controls are actually hooked up or not. We can just remove the parts that hide it, though. Let's look at that. Oh my. Oh. All right. Let's look at this. So these are assets. Load bang. Okay, there's stuff that's being used for micro light. Maybe palette stuff that's shared. 
Okay, this seems to be just like a saver. Again, this is okay, this is code that initializes the palette. I can see that. And then feeds it into this UI object, which is the grid. And the grid then processes that and displays all the colors. Palette inlets. Okay. Lesson for you, Kiscobi. You don't have to make a comment that explains what the palette and the outlets are and the outlets are. You can go in here. You can uh it's off my screen for some reason. Use task manager. Jesus H Christ. Yeah, your mic is acting funny. Uh, what's up with my mic? Should it be louder? Let's make it a little bit louder. Maybe I'm cutting out for you guys. Maybe that's it. I'll make it a little bit louder. Hopefully, that should make it a little bit better. So you go into this here bit, this is your inlet, that's what maps to this inlet here, and you can go to the inspector. And that has this thing called a comment, and if you add new color data here, uh, it's actually going to show up when you hover over that, so now it says new color data, and now for the second one, we can do bang127. And now you don't have to keep that comment there, if you're wondering what something does, you can just hover over it. That's one improvement you can make, like right out of the bat, just to improve code readability. Oh, okay. Now this should be better. Uh, if you guys need me to re-explain re anything, just like let me know. Uh, I'm still currently trying to make sense of this, so let's see. Yeah, that looks like just a grid, and then when you click on things, it triggers this. And now this code is ran when you, and then this is a mess. You can't see what the code's doing on first glance, and I guess this is a mess for him to maintain as well. Because when you write code like this, it's not only is it hard to figure out what it does, it's also hard for the original developer to figure out what it does. So when you have to make changes to it or uh, apply some uh, post-processing, it can sometimes be really confusing to just like figure out what this thing used to do in the first place. So I advise people when they work on Max for Live uh, to always organize their their cables. I always organize my cables. And the amount of messy wires that I see everywhere is just insane. Like, how can you tell what this code does without first um, unjumbling it? Okay, let's move it down here. Ignore the fact that this line goes through all of this. Uh, and let's unjumble it. Uh, by the way, okay, basic lesson in Max for anyone that's not ever done Max. These Max objects, you can think of them as if they were devices in Ableton. So they're very similar to chains. Uh, they have these sort of wires. So anything that's at the top of an object is input data. So that's data that it that it receives. So just like you receive uh, MIDI from the left side in Ableton's chain, in Maxwell Live you receive things from the top in the form of numbers. And then you, when when that object does its processing on that thing, uh, you just gave it. It's gonna output the processed part at the bottom. Uh, I don't really see a MIDI in here, but maybe I can find it. Where is it? Oh, right here. So this is the MIDI in the MIDI in object, uh, and the MIDI in object is basically what what uh, gives you the notes that you feed it through Ableton. And now we can follow this from here. It goes down into MIDI parse, which will separate note ons, control changes, and I think even sysx. Nope. Okay, sysx is a separate is a separate object for us, and it'll continue doing that. And the good thing about Max, which Ableton doesn't really have, is uh, that you can um, have multiple inlets and multiple outlets, and you can freely connect these to any object you want. So you have, you have free control of where all the signals are going and flowing. And in my opinion, honestly, this would make a, a better chain workflow, but it's not really necessary for the case of Launchpad uh, covers and Launchpad stuff. But yeah. If Ableton were to have like these sorts of wires, it's sort of like if you ever use DaVinci Resolve, uh, this is basically the same thing as DaVinci Resolve. The way the way like the, the main structure works. It's pretty much the same as DaVinci Resolve's effect chains. So yeah, we can trace this now and we can unjumble this mess to figure out what it does. So let's just first space them all out a little bit. By the way, in, in Max, uh, there's something called the execution order and you have to uh, make sure you keep track of it at all times, and that's why I think it's good to organize. So, in Max, uh, all of the like cables they execute right to left. So when I 
output uh, the data from this threshold to object. The first device that receives it, or object, I keep saying device now for, for whatever reason, but the first object that receives it is going to be the ZL clear here. And then the next one that's going to receive that is the ZL length, because that's where the wires go. So the position of the receiving object, it goes right to left. So this one, then this one, then this one, and then this one. If you want to override that, you can use a trigger object, which is a T, and then III for whatever you want, so how many stuff you need. And then they fire in this order, and then you can precisely hook them up like this if you want to. So now you're sure that this one will, will fire first into this one, and then this one will fire second into this one, and you've changed the execution order. I like to use triggers wherever possible because it makes it clear and concise. You can also not use them, but then you have to make sure the positioning is correct. And the bug in Apollo, uh, where the connector didn't work in 1.0.5, I believe, or 6, actually 5, yeah, was caused because I messed up the execution order. So I didn't write any bad code, I just messed up the order it's executed in. So I, let's say I put this here, and now it, do it does something that's different. It does this first, and then at the end it does this. And that's obviously something you don't want. So what you want to do is you want to unjub all of these wires, so that you make sure that the code is readable. And we can do that some, something like this. Now, I'm not really caring for the execution order here, but I'll show you how much more readable it is if you actually care. Let's actually move this down here. What is this cable? Okay. Nice. Okay, let's, let's do it like that. Uh, align, align, and align, and align. Okay, so this makes it a hell of a lot easier to see how the execution goes and what it's trying to do when you organize your code like this. Like, I can't tell what this does, and I couldn't tell what this did before. Now I can see that this is an Uzi device, and that, that basically triggers like a loop, sort of. Uh, it looks like it does, it stops doing whatever it's trying to do here, so whatever it's trying to do from here, 0 0.1, what is that needed for? And then it doesn't really go into anything, it, it never really went into anything, so I assume this is unused code, because it never really, like, the, this thing does something and then it doesn't output that anywhere, so not really, um, anything so that does really nothing great we can just delete it it'll probably still work but let's keep it here why not let's put it there uh chat has gone a little bit silent um we still have 23 people watching which is actually great um i'm mostly talking and uh you guys are just trying to understand what i'm saying so i think that's fair enough and hello uh, <laughs> i think that's fair enough uh let's see what happened now that i've actually deleted the these these things, I moved them away from the presentation. Now let me see if there's code related to this, say. I can I can keep that selected, I think. Or I can let's just go find. Nope, it doesn't search for the text. We're all trying to understand. Okay. Uh, there's no really nice way uh, to take you to this exactly. The best thing you have is to select and then to move around sort of and then try to find where it is. But it looks like there's no code relating to that. I think he just stripped out all the code that relates to that. And that's actually a decent dish protection for, for, from getting the live version. Oh yeah, right here. This is all empty. This probably used to have code here that was just deleted. Yeah, there was probably a bunch of code here coming up from this and coming up from this that was deleted. It makes sense why these are all on the side here. So that makes sense. Like, let's save this now. Uh, let's close that and let's close this. Let's get back into the. Oh, it's on my other screen. Let's freeze this, save it, and now. Oh fuck. Okay. Get out. And now we have access to this. Now you can click this, and I don't know if it does anything. Yeah, the code is all stripped out. It really does nothing. So. 
Yeah, not even the color of this. So good one on for Kaskobi. Um, good one on Kaskobi for doing this, so that you actually can't. This still toggles, but I don't think it does anything still. Load this doesn't do anything either. So yeah, just the UI is kept here, and the code is actually stripped out. All right. So you do this. Nope, doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything really. None of that does anything. Yep. All right. So I think that's pretty much all we can do with this. But okay, let's at least explore the UI and see what it would have done. Okay, so now I'm gonna start making comparisons to my plugins with with the assumption that um, with the assumption that we can do this with my plugins. If we can't, that's props to Kaskobi. And I, I probably don't know what most of this stuff does, so let's let's check out what, what all of this can do. So apart from the color picker, which I don't think is a very useful thing. I mean, it's certainly an improvement, but I don't think it's improved to the point where I'd actually use it. Uh, I still prefer uh, drawing my gradients in Iris because this seems to be capped at 8. What if I wanted more than 8? And also, what if I wanted, like, um, what if I wanted it to, like, loop? Iris can do loop. This thing doesn't seem it can do loop. And it, and it couldn't because it's a MIDI clip, it's supposed to be static. So, as far as the color picker goes, for me, personally, no practical use. I can see that some people who don't particularly like using my plugins, I can see that those people can get some sort of benefit out of this. Uh, but personally, I don't think I'd ever use this. Uh, like, I'm not talking about the whole thing, about just about the color picker. I don't think I would use it. Next. These buttons, I think these obviously mean rotating it around. So this looks like rotate counterclockwise, this is rotate clockwise, and this is, f I guess, flip horizontally and flip vertically. I mean, dude, I, I, I have plugins for this since like one and a half year ago. What have you been doing, Kaskobi? I, I can do this for a long time already. Easy, just drop a flip device and you're done. You can do it, you, you can make the MIDI clip and then you just rotate it and you're done. So this is not, not anything new. This is something I can do already. Pinching is something that's, that I haven't used anywhere. And I think that's the part where he like starts an effect fast but then ends it really slowly. And uh, that's uh, something I, don't, I didn't do ever and I don't do. So uh, yeah, I don't have that at all. And uh, if, you, if there's an easy way to do that now, that's great. All right. So that's that's one innovation so far. And personally, I would maybe use this just for the pinch at some points. Why does the stream lag so much? Uh, it's on your end, sir. I haven't dropped a single frame so far. Sorry. Sorry, Factor. Uh, about the gradients, I mean, this is obviously inferior to Iris. Like, do I even have to point it out? Like, you get, you get eight colors. OK, you get a color preview, which, I mean, I don't know. You haven't had for a long time, and we still make covers. Okay, props for the color preview. Let's not kid ourselves. So props for the color preview here. You get to cap your gradient out at eight. Iris can do as many as you want infinitely. Uh, Iris also has spacing. This has spacing as well. Um, so that's equal. Uh, save and load. I mean, do you really need? I mean, I think all plugins have this, right? So you can like. Wait, do I have outbreak? Alright, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure that with any device, you can just come here and click the save button, and now I just reset one, and that's saved down up here now, and now you can drag it in any time, and it saves the gradient, so this is again, nothing new. This is something that people could do with actually any Max for Life device, not just Iris, any Max for Life device could do this, since Ableton exists, so that's nothing new. For more of an undo redo type of thing. You sure it's undo redo? It seems like it's notes selected. I don't think it's for undo redo. Cast is not taking several seats, I guess, uh yeah. 
Now, I don't think this is for under redo. Look, there is, th this circle clearly implies that it's like an axis. Like, this one has like a uh, cylinder. It's like a rotation axis, if you ask me. And then this is for uh, speeding it up and slowing it down. I mean, you have this already. You just click it three times instead of one time. I think this is also nothing new. So far, I've gotten to this point down here, and the only thing that is actually new and useful is the pinch. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Uh, clear all drawn MIDI. I mean, all right. Clear all drawn MIDI. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go here, take my keyboard. I'm going to press Control A. Okay. I press Control A. I'm going to go here. I'm going to press Delete. There we go. Done it. Easy. Again, nothing new. Something you can do in two key presses. Uh, note mode, draw, click. I don't know what that does, so I can't really comment on that. I would love to know what that does. World Custom Palette sounds like just changes the preview here. I don't think that it, this can make it output so sex. MIDI clips cannot contain so sex. They can contain control changes. So, oh, this is actually a really good opportunity to show this off. I don't think many people know about this. So, um, you can actually edit the control change data in a MIDI clip. And uh, what uh, Ableton actually uses, I mean, not Ableton, but the launchpad, what the launchpad actually uses for top lights on user mode are these control uh, change messages. So these, these are control changes. Uh, I can actually show it sort of, but I, I think you'll be good. You'll be like good off, like better off just trusting me. So we can actually modify these right here. So starting from 91, that's this button, and 98 is this button. Why 91 and 98? Because uh, the first uh, digit, 9, represents the row, so that's row 9. This is row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then there's uh, the second digit, which represents the column, so this is 0, column 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then this is 9. And the mode light has a special value of, I think, 100. Uh, but it's not accessible via control change, you have to use SysX for that. But since the top lights are accessible via control changes, you can actually go, go straight in here and set this to, say, a color. Let's say, what's a good color? Uh, let's do five. I think that should be red. And then at some point, we can change that to a six. Now, I'm editing just one key here. This, this here graph is for one key. And at some point, let's change it to a seven. And then let's just cut it off. Oops. And then let's just cut it off. And now that is actually going to, look at that, it displays a little red gradient. And now we can copy this, oops, we can copy that to the other keys. I think it's kind of placing it one after the other, but well, that's good. 26, 27, 29, I mean, nine. what am I saying, 26? What the fuck, I'm very retarded. Okay, we can see the launch pad. Your camera's also off, that's yeah, right on. I'm, I'm, I'm actually autistic. Uh, it's 12 a.m., don't hurt me. And let's have a look at it. Yeah, I slightly messed up one of these, but that's what you can do. Oh, it looks like it's just unstable. Yeah. But yeah, this is one thing that's possible to do. So, what do you mean launch ready is gone? It's not, it's right there. So you can draw lights on your top uh, without using top lights. I don't have any top lights here, and I'm in user mode. So I am on my custom firmware, but I'm in user mode. So I'm in live mode, user mode. I still have the same restriction uh, for the top row. And uh, what, what about making a plugin that converts notes you draw here? So you, say you have like a, since you can already edit the MIDI stuff, th this would be a way better thing in my opinion. So say you, you draw stuff here, and put it on what the top row would be. Actually, that's down below. I'm done. And you put it down here. Now you see I have no access to the top row. You can see I have no access because now I put it where the top row should be and I have no access. Why not make a plugin that takes the slide effect you made and then at the press of a button it converts the notes that are down here to these control change in the clip. Uh, where are they? Here. And then you could load this into any uh, into any MIDI X like device, so any MIDI player like Lightweight, MIDI Fire, MIDI X One or Two, and it would just play the control changes instead, and and then you would have top light support without any top lights required, so you wouldn't ever need top lights devices. That would be one improvement to Ableton. 
But then again, you have the custom firmware, so you don't you don't need that either way. You can just draw the notes and you're done. But for people who don't use custom firmware, you could totally just switch to live mode and use those control changes. Why not make a plugin like that? That seems like a much better way to do it. Uh, I want to come back to these gradients real quick. As far as these gradients go, I never really liked them in the first place, and this is why. This is my reasoning why. So, when you do things like this, there are a couple reasons why I don't like it. And now I'm gonna just like make a ghetto fade with like four of these. So first of all, if you do them in the MIDI clip editor like a pleb, you're gonna have it look like this, and that's not really good. And uh, let me let me get a new MIDI clip without the control change stuff. There we go. So now you got this, and we're gonna place it up here. So you have an effect like this. It's a shitty fade, but it's a fade. Let's let's think of it as a fade. Let me speed it up a little bit. There we go. So now that we're we're working with this, right? Let's see the flaws here. First of all, now it's not easy to change the shape of the pattern anymore. To change the shape of the pattern, you pretty much but by pattern I mean the movements. So I mean the fact that it, it goes in this direction. So <clears throat> it's not easy to change that anymore now. You, you pretty much have to select stuff like this and then move it around. You can't go and reuse the drawing bit because now it ruins everything. And uh, you also, uh, I mean, you can select here, but then you have to do it six times. You have to do it one time for that. You have to do it another time for that, and that's boring. Or you can just delete the whole thing and then fix the mistake you made. Say you wanted it to go like uh, this instead fix the mistake. This is a very simple mistake. You could fix this by just inverting, but you have to get my point. You can fix this by doing that. But say you wanted to maybe like rearrange them entirely. I'm just using a pretty oversimplified uh, case, which happens to be solvable, but let's assume it's not solvable easily by selecting stuff. So you have like a huge effect that spans across all of this. H how would you do it that way? You couldn't. So that's why I never really liked these. In addition to that, not many uh, of our MIDI-like devices like it when you do this kind of stuff because there's a note off here that's kind of like you can't see it. But MIDI is not actually notes like this. MIDI is just okay. Here's a note on event, and then here's a note off event, and then a tiny minuscule amount after that, we're gonna have another note on event. But that note off event is still there, uh, and that's how Ableton's editor kind of like does that thing. But you don't necessarily need to have that off. You can just send another on, and it'll override the previous one. And uh, that's why I don't think these gradients are really good to do in the editor from, from like the, the get-go. If you do it in something like Iris or Fade Velocity or whatever, what I actually do is I don't send an off between them. So it's always an on. It just overrides itself. So there's no, there's no additional data sent to the launchpad, that, and that improves uh, the amount of bandwidth we can use. So we can make faster lights. Uh, that are like the, the exact same size as the slower counterpart. And also, uh, we don't get the chance to see the gap. Sometimes when, you're, when, when you like lag out, you can kind of see those node off gaps sometimes. Uh, but with this, you don't get the chance to see those. You just see continuous color. So there are multiple downsides to doing it this way. And what this gradient, I think, does is just turns this here into this, basically. And I don't think that's nice at all. I think using something like Iris is a much more flexible solution here. Because then you don't even have to touch the, the fade. If you want to change the pattern, you can just like change this, re-export it, put it back in there, and it's already faded out. It already works. Hey, Daniel. Welcome to the stream. So I, don't, I, I, so I think that this is actually worse than the current solutions. So it's not even equal to what we have in Iris. I actually think it's way worse. And I, I generally don't like the concept of putting too much light effects here. Like, like he has here, look at this. Let me show you. B. Like, like in this picture, I don't know if this is like a legit light show that he uses. But um, this here is too much. Like. If Kaskobi has a problem with the MIDI editor because it doesn't work, it's clunky. I, I've seen a couple of his videos that he says it's like millions of notes and it's really hard and stuff. Dude, it's all been made easy for you already. You don't have to use this. You can just make a simple pattern if you want, a simple movement, export it, and then you have 
all the post processing tools that you could ever wish for, and, and you can just like make it work. You can just it's as simple as that. You can just make it work with, with your original movement idea. And if you want to change that idea and stuff, you don't have to destroy the whole thing. You can just change that one bit you want, and then it, and then the rest just works automatically. That's the kind of thing that I I, I can't understand why Cascopy does. And I, I'm, I'm sure it's not just Cascopy, I'm sure it's more people in general. I feel like it's a lot simpler to just like have a device here that does the fading for you. So instead of managing it here, not only is it easier to work with, it allows for faster stuff, and it's cleaner in general. Alright, enough about the gradient rant. I hope you can see my perspective on this right now. The code doesn't look too good. From the parts that he's left inside, I don't like them. They're very messy, hard to read unless you uh, unscramble it, but it's not the worst that I've seen. So I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really give a plus on that, but I don't really give a minus on it either. If you're ever curious, you should open up Exige's MIDI extension. Holy fuck, that thing is unreadable. That thing is like actually unreadable. And uh, I think that concludes it. Oh, and these move the effect, which is also not really something new, but um, it is sort of for Ableton. For Ableton, it is new. You, you would have to delete this whole thing and then redraw it, but moved one to the right because of the shitty drum rack. Uh, but you don't have to do that anymore with Apollo. You can just use uh, the move device to move it on the XY grid. So, like, right here, if I make an effect like this, now I have Iris loaded, but if you make an effect like this, now this is not easy to move to, like, this position. It's not easy to move it here. It's near impossible, actually. If you try to move it to the right, it kind of, like, does a whole different thing, and it just flips around. And I'm assuming that this is what that's meant to do. Shift effect. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, well, this is new for Ableton, and I see it sort of being useful, uh, like actually useful. This is already a thing in Apollo for a while now. It has been one of the most, well, the, like, one of the actually first things I've, I've done in Apollo is that I don't use the drum like layout, I use the XY grid, and thus you can actually move stuff normally across. I would pay to see Madden Cast in a Discord call. <laughs> oh well. So, we got that. Uh, let me show you actually. I actually probably have it down. Oh, uh, there we go. I'm gonna use 1.0.6 and I'm gonna close Ableton because it'll mess with me. Oh god, is my desktop hidden or not? Yes, it is. Okay, <sighs> crash is averted. <laughs> you don't want to see my desktop. Oh, I don't even use my own program. Yay. Okay, so, uh, Yes, he's yeah. It's called his name is Kaskobi. You can say it. And uh, yeah, he's that's the demo version that I've got with only like a small amount of functionality. And he's uh, planning to sell the full version. It's not complete yet, according to people here. Really, the only thing I can see people actually using are pinch and shift. Uh, pinch is something entirely new, and shift is something that already exists in Apollo. So let's say there's like one and a half thing that people would actually use. Then it's because he's a sellout. Okay, well that's a, that's a bit harsh. I'm obviously memeing there, but yeah, you have to pay for the full version. So, uh, talking about this, uh, I'm gonna switch to using this Midian 2 port, so that's my live port. Okay, so I'm having lights from Apollo now. Let me check if I'm in the correct layout real quick. Drum rack, if I'm still in user mode, that should be correct, okay. Uh, so now I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a pattern, and we're going to make it... Actually, let's use the launch path for it. Oops, need to turn on the gestures. Right, duration 132. Meanwhile, you're giving... Yes, I'm giving 10 times better. Yes, Apollo is pretty fucking huge. It's getting really hard for me to manage, actually the code and everything. So yeah, now you have this pattern, okay? And you can process it with a fade, which looks 10 times better than anything that exists in Ableton, because it has full RGB. So that fade is smoother than anything you could ever try, try to do in Ableton. 
You can add as many colors as you like to any position you like. like want, want more green? Sure, get more green. Want more red? Sure, get more red. Simple as that. Let's keep this fade. I, I don't think it's particularly great, but let's keep it. Uh, so what I was trying to show is that you can now move this effect easily. So you take this after the pattern has been uh, like after the pattern is playing, you can take the move device, you can move this to the right, and there you go. It moves without that weird weird thingy. And you can also move it like this. So in any direction, and you can also wrap it around. So if you like sort of if you like exit the grid, you can go back to the other side of the grid. I'm pretty. I'm not, I don't know if Cascopi's thing does that. I can't know. Or if you don't like that, you can also use this copy, which is like movement generator. Interpolate. Let's put it to like 132. And now let's move it down here. Check this out. Whoosh. You get a you get an entirely new effect that maybe you would never have thought of before. Maybe you would never have tried it just by playing around with the uh, movements here. If we make it faster, I bet it'll look. A lot better. Let's make it a little bit faster. There you go. I can, I can totally see this being used as an effect. Maybe not with these fade colors, but I can totally see this being an effect. And this took like no time to make at all. Let's make this a bit dimmer. Yeah, like that. Look, that's great. I can totally see this being an effect that's used. Made it in no time and super flexible. If I just wanted to like change the direction, I can do something like this. It's a whole new effect now. Go to any other direction. Look at that. You could now you know what you could do with this. You could you have infinite room to experiment with this. Now you wanna you can like filter it so it doesn't go on the side. And it's okay to waste uh, CPU like this because it lets you be created. So now you have this movement. Let's use transform flip. Actually, let's use. Let's just rotate, not flip. Let's just transform rotate 180 bypass. And I have this effect. And you want to change the fade? Okay. Let's do it like that. I pick any color I want. There's no remembering numbers or looking for where it is in the grid. It's a standard color picker that you've been using in image editing since forever. So it's all standardized. And you can make any sort of effect you like. Let's rotate this one more time 90 degrees. There you go, that's another new effect. Looks pretty good. So I went from that little uh, blocky looking sweep to this weird spinner effect in like 30 seconds, and I've changed the color and everything. It, it really lets you have as much freedom as you want with the post-processing and everything. Really, really flexible. And I think um, comparing this to eyedrop is a little bit unfair, sort of, because they, they're not really trying to achieve the same thing, but at the same time, they're kind of about the same thing. Like, they're, they're both about Creating your light effects start to finish. You start with drawing your notes and you finish it up with eyedrop. Here you also start in Apollo and finish up in Apollo. And um, it just works, sort of, like that. So I don't really know what to say more than this. Eyedrop is really not nothing new apart from the pincher stuff. I don't really know what to say about it. I don't I don't I, I mean it's probably going to start being widely used just because it's Cascobi, but I really see no practical use to this. Meanwhile, here's Apollo. You have all of the power in the world you want. What is Eyedrop? Oh, hey, Vasky. Eyedrop is... I guess it's a competitor to Apollo at this point. I don't know. I can't tell if it's a competitor or not. You guys know better because you're the guys using these stuff for real. You guys know if Apollo or Eyedrop are about the same thing for your creation process. And if they're actually competitors. You guys know better. Now, say I remove this key filter. There you go, now the sides are included as well. But that, that gives you more effect. Make it longer. Yeah. Let's make it more towards the red. A bit less red. Maybe dimmer. I, I think I just want full red. Yeah, looks pretty good. And this gives you infinite freedom, and it's super smooth. Ever wanted to show it off in a screen share? Now you can. Easy. You have, you have everything you would ever want in Apollo. I've made everything work. Anything you imagine, you can do it. This whole live stream has been a massive advertisement for Apollo? Uh, not really. I mean, now that I think about it, I guess it 
I guess it ends up looking like that, but not my intended, not my intended uh, purpose for this live stream. I launched trial by accident. Okay. Uh, let me show you it last key now that you're back here. Actually, you weren't even here in, uh, like in the first place. All right. Dream it, do it with Apollo. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, Mimic Uh Let me grab this thing again. Right. So here's iDrop. You launch it here. It's still Max for Live, so it's the shitty language. Uh, but still better than Node.js, haha. Don't click off, please. And uh, you still get to draw your notes the same uh, way you did before. Let me just set up the output. So you still get to draw your light effects the same way you did before. So with stuff like this. Oops, let's make that a bit faster. But now you get to select the notes and click the color you want. Clicks off. <laughs> yeah, nothing is new and you have to pay. Yeah, exactly, Zan. Like, the only functionality that you're really paying for is pinch. Like, I don't... S yeah, everything else is already there. Is it word by suite? If you have yeah, it's word. It's totally word by suite. Because of Max for Live. Yeah, you have to pay for it, dude. Okay, so I removed it, but, but before this, this whole section down here below, the, below this thing, this whole segment was blacked out before I removed the, the, the thing that blacks it out. And it said... Uh, Buy, please. That's what it said. Uh, but the buttons don't do anything, like because um, the code has been removed behind them. But I removed the the UI. So you're supposed to pay for this, and it's enough that one person pays for it and then leaks the AMXD file, and now 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 everyone has access to it. And uh, yeah, you just get to pick pick the color. You can load a palette here if you want different colors, but it still doesn't actually change the colors. It just changes the preview. Uh, pinching is the only thing that's useful, and the gradient like iris, which is one and a half year old, is way better than this. Uh, this here is already included in Ableton. You can go here, click a couple times. Oh, what's that? Let me check what that is. Oh, thanks for the one dollar donation. Green said means a lot. Thank you so much. So. This already exists. This is already inside of Ableton. You can go here and make it slower or faster. It's an Ableton functionality that's right here. It's already there. Shifting is new to Ableton, but it already exists in Apollo for like a month now. Apollo's been public for a month almost, and this already exists in Apollo. Uh, and yeah, that's it. This also exists since one and a half year ago. Flip device. And yeah. How much? Uh, I don't know how much. I was gonna sacrifice a few bucks to leak this, huh? <laughs> Damn. All right. That's another one dollar donation. Thanks. Oh wait, you have messages. Okay, I didn't. I didn't see your message the first time. If there was one, just another donate. Thank you for the donation. Yeah, not much more I can say about this. You're pretty much wasting five bucks if you buy this. And that concludes today's plugin review. All right, boys. I think I've said all that I have to say about iDrop. I really don't think there's anything else I can say. Yeah, <laughs> it's a joke. I'm sorry, Kaskovi. Uh, you, you, you hyped this up a lot. I, I remember you... Uh, okay, I'm gonna take a, a bite here. I remember you using this Discord Rich Presence and saying iDrop beta 1, 2, 3, and then there was like all these preview screenshots and everything. You hyped this up a fair amount. For what? For pinch? Is that what you have to do for? All of this is already existing in Ableton for free. I don't see why anybody would ever pay for this. From wasting five dollars and donating to Matt. Oh yeah, you can also support Apollo. So if you if if you think iDrop is crap, and if you think Apollo is better, you can totally support me on my Patreon, which is one hundred percent dedicated to Apollo. So all the all the proceeds from here go into Apollo, which is right here. If you go there, you can support Apollo Studio directly. I, I put a lot of work into Apollo, like seriously. Like that's months of just eat, sleep, Apollo, repeat. 
Oh yes, another donation. Let's check that out. Two shan donated one dollar. Just another donation. Thank you. Thank you so much for the donation. Cast note B. Amazing plug, proud of you. Thank you, Milky. And um in the end, uh I would actually be very sad to see this take off and uh, Apollo be left in the dust. Because I really don't think there's anything new here to see at all. Except for Pinch, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm giving props uh, and credit where due. Pinch, if it works the way it's explained, that, I think that's pretty cool. And something that I should probably actually add to Apollo. I think I might have an issue for that already, but I'm not sure. But th that might be something I would maybe expand Apollo with. Is it worth paying it? I mean, I wouldn't use this if it were free, so... Yeah, if this thing was free, I would not use it. So, I, I think that answers the question of whether if it's worth paying for. Laughing so much. <laughs> Damn, bro. Damn. So, yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about it? I don't know. Have you guys got any take on this? Like, what are your thoughts and... Uh, Opinions, etc. I would like to if you if you like don't agree with anything I said, uh, we can talk about it right now. If 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 you want to offer a different perspective, I'm actually very open to talking about it. And if I maybe missed something or was wrong, or if there's actually something like very very useful about this and revolutionary, I, I would love if you could bring it to my attention because I would actually love to know. Why is it buffering set the quality to one forty four? I don't know, man, dude. I okay. I have not dropped a single frame. Drop frame zero. I'm not gonna show it to you because you don't need to see it. Drop frame zero. I don't know why you're buffering so much. Where you get Apollo? Apollo, you can get on my Apollo Studio video. But I'll I'll link a direct link to the downloads as well here. Right here, you can get it right there. Oh right. Okay, if you want. I mean, I don't encourage anyone to just buy it and leak it. That technically hurts Kaskobi. And I don't want anyone to hurt anyone. <clears throat> so, uh, I don't encourage that myself. But you're free to do whatever you want. If you want to get Apollo and use it because it's actually better, the link's up there. And uh, for any uh, help or stuff like that, you can go right here. Let's do invite. Uh, no limit. Never. There you go. That's the link to Apollo's Discord. If you have any questions about Apollo and anything, I will support you. Not gay. He like PP. No you. One's actually setting a name on Discord, huh, Maski? I'm just here to get mad about you not making notches. We don't talk about that here. Please don't mention it. Is it me or does Kaz in his circles cover look like Sid from Toy Story? I'm not trying to be mean. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll put an input manager. Oh, that's a separate kind of worms that I don't have time for right now. Currently, it's 12 a.m. I don't have time for that. I maybe have like 20 minutes, 30 minutes left. Maybe I can do that another day. Uh, would you guys want to see a plugin review for Input and Output Manager? Should we make plugin reviews a thing? I just did this spontaneously. I don't know. Rant Project Manager. <laughs> Oof. Matt can rant on that for hours, trust me. <laughs> yeah, because I ranted about it to you, Velky. Of course you know. Yes, okay, we'll do it another time then. I don't know exactly when. I'm working tomorrow, so I'm not sure. Plugin review is more like 5 million Apollo ads in the playlist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sad. Oh god. Right. I don't think you can burn Kaskobi enough? Yeah. Maybe. But we're burning his plugins, not him. So, uh, I think that's okay. Matt, buy the domain now. Which domain? Which domain exactly would you want me to buy? Apollosuit.io? No, why would I? I have Apollo.mat1.com. $500 a second? Yeah, that, that too. They're, they're expensive, I think. 
Oh, not Matt's fault. Yeah, I guess. So the math feel works. <laughs> Damn, bros. All right. Okay. I don't know what we can do now. Uh, I guess I'll end the stream here. I'm I'm done with eye drop. So one more time. Final conclusion. It's useless, and if you pay for it, you're dumb. Uh, the only thing I can see it being useful for is the pinch amount. So yeah, props props to that. Uh, for Kaskobi. But it's it's again a very specific use for the pinching. Uh, it's not something you would use all the time. It's like a very specific use case. So yeah, props to the pinch. Everything else, what the hell, man. Apollo was blocked because of the harm. Yeah, it could technically. I don't I don't sign it. I don't want to pay Microsoft four hundred bucks to sign it. And yeah, there there are also virtual launchpads. So you can you can you can work without a launchpad in Apollo. You can load the virtual thingy, and you don't have to actually have a launchpad. Or if your launch is just like away and you don't feel like getting it, you can work with the on-screen one. Perfect. My review echo. We can do that as well. We can do that as well. I mean, we can do that later. We can totally do that later. More details and the uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Yeah, you don't necessarily need a launch pad. Imagine this is an electron. What, Apollo? I mean, uh, Apollo could have been an electron, but guess what happened? You can make a light show that I ever, ever have bought a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's late too, Sean. Yeah, it's very late. Damn it. It's late. Okay. I guess we're gonna do the other plugin reviews a different time. I would have maybe done them right now if it wasn't so late. Uh, but soon I'll have to go to sleep. I have work in the morning, etc. And uh, I'll be leaving. Eat something. Maybe do some other stuff for a short amount of time and go to bed. Uh, thank you guys for s oh oh fuck no, Dan no, D no don't take my launch pads please no, no, no it's mine no don't take it it's mine. Wait where's my other one it's oh no it's on the bed I can't get it fuck, rip. Shit man why'd you gotta do this why'd you gotta take my other launch pad? Crap Daniel, Dan Daniel why you do this? Yeah, uh, thank you guys for sticking around watching this epic plugin review. Uh, I'm gonna catch you guys in a later live stream. Uh, thank you for sticking around watching. Goodbye.